Authors like Graham Hancock are known for questioning conventional history, and his work on Mays presents a compelling case. He points to Mays as a key example where its DNA is revealing a startling story about its origins. What was once a simple wild grass known as Teosinte was intentionally transformed into the foundational crop that supported entire societies. Hancock argues this was not a natural accident, but a product of sophisticated human ingenuity thousands of years ago. Today, modern science is uncovering genetic evidence that aligns remarkably with these ancient traditions, revealing a forgotten story of innovation, spirituality, and the co-evolution of people and a plant. To truly understand the maze civilization, we must first appreciate its deep spiritual significance. For ancient Mesoamerican cultures, especially the Maya, maize was not just food, it was the very essence of human life. The Mayan creation story, the Popol Vuh, recounts how the gods first tried to create humans from mud, but they dissolved. Their next attempt, using wood, resulted in beings without souls. Finally, the gods ground maize, mixed it with water, and from this sacred dough, they fashioned the first true humans, portraying maize not just as nourishment, but as the literal substance of humanity. Deities associated with maize were central figures in the Mayan pantheon, appearing frequently in art and ritual. The most prominent is the tonsured maize god, depicted as a graceful youth whose flowing hair mimics corn silk, symbolizing vitality and renewal. Another key figure, the foliated maize god, represented the plant's leafy, growing stage. Together, these deities embodied the life cycle of maize and its profound connection to human destiny. Interestingly, the identity of maize wasn't exclusively male. In some traditions, it was seen as a female figure, reflecting its role as a nurturer. This fluidity shows the depth of their perception. Maize was a universal life force that transcended simple categories. One of the most captivating legends is that of the Maze Mountain, where all the world's maize seeds were once hidden. With humanity on the brink of starvation, the gods cracked the mountain open, releasing the seeds and ensuring survival. This story reflects a historical truth. The cultivation of maize was hard-won knowledge, perfected over millennia. For the Maya, the origin of maize wasn't a simple tale of agriculture. It was a divine gift of cosmic importance. This sacredness was reinforced through daily life and ritual. Ceremonies revolved around planting and harvesting, with offerings made to ensure bountiful crops. Theatrical performances would reenact the life of the maize god. Even in death, maize played a role. These acts underscored the belief that maize was the bridge between the earthly and spiritual realms. Rulers reinforced this connection by associating themselves with maize gods, legitimizing their authority by linking their rule to the crop that fed the people. Through maize, leaders could foster a unified identity, embedding their power within the sacred agricultural cycle. The reverence for this single plant reveals that ancient peoples saw it not just as a crop, but as a living partner, its cycles mirroring their own. The sacred status of maize was matched by the practical genius of its cultivators. Long before modern science, Mesoamerican farmers developed agricultural techniques that remain impressive today. Their mastery of growings, processing, and sustaining maize was foundational to their success. A cornerstone of their innovation was nixtamalization. This process involved soaking and cooking maize kernels in an alkaline solution, typically made from lime or ash. The effects were transformative. Nixtamalization unlocked crucial nutrients, particularly niacin, and made amino acids more available. Without it, a diet heavily reliant on maize could lead to severe deficiency diseases like pellagra. These ancient people engineered a biochemical solution to a problem modern science wouldn't identify for thousands of years, ensuring the health and stability of their populations. Equally brilliant was their system of companion planting, famously known as the Three Sisters. Farmers planted maize, beans, and squash together in a symbiotic arrangement. The maize stalks provided a natural trellis for the beans to climb. The beans fixed nitrogen in the soil to fertilize the maize, and the broad leaves of the squash spread across the ground, preventing weeds and conserving moisture. This created a self-sustaining ecosystem that maximized yields and provided a balanced diet of carbohydrates, proteins, and vitamins, all while maintaining soil fertility. 
This was not random farming. It was a sophisticated ecological strategy that demonstrated a deep harmony with the environment. The success of these methods allowed cities to grow and cultures to flourish. However, the reliance on maize was not uniform across all regions. In many parts of Mesoamerica, it was the absolute center of life. Yet in other areas, like the American Southwest, the Puebloan peoples cultivated maize, but balanced it with a diverse range of wild resources, like amaranth and pinion nuts. This flexible approach provided resilience in harsh, unpredictable climates. This variation shows that maize civilizations were not a monolith, but a spectrum of cultures that adapted their strategies to local conditions. This adaptability, both of the people and the plant itself, allowed their relationship to withstand droughts, floods, and other challenges. Maize was not only a source of food, but also a cultural bridge, a unifying symbol that traveled across diverse landscapes, carrying stories and rituals with it. For decades, the origin of maize seemed settled. The accepted story was that it was domesticated once from its wild ancestor, Teosinti, in southern Mexico around 9,000 years ago. It was presented as a straightforward example of early agricultural achievement. However, when scientists began analyzing the DNA of maize, this simple narrative completely unraveled. The genetic evidence revealed a far more complex and tangled history, one involving multiple ancestors and a long, continent-spanning process of experimentation. At the center of this story is Teosinte, a wild grass that bears little resemblance to the maize we know today. Its kernels are tiny, encased in hard shells, and difficult to harvest. Early theories assumed farmers simply selected for better traits over centuries, but genetic analysis showed that maize and teosinte are surprisingly closely related. A few key genetic changes can make a significant difference. This discovery opened the door to a deeper mystery. DNA evidence now suggests that maize wasn't domesticated just once. Instead, its genetic code contains markers from different wild relatives, indicating multiple hybridization events across various regions. It appears maize was not the product of a single community, but a collaborative, pan-American effort. This paints a picture of ancient peoples as curious innovators, sharing seeds and knowledge, and constantly refining their most important crop over thousands of years. The timeline for this process was also far longer than previously thought, with early domestication starting over 9,000 years ago, but the maize we would recognize today not emerging until much later. This long, gradual development shows an extraordinary level of patience and scientific dedication. Furthermore, DNA studies reveal how different regions developed unique maize varieties. These adapted to local environments. Ancient farmers selectively bred strains suited for high-altitude mountains, humid lowlands, and arid deserts. Each genetic adaptation tells a story of a community's ingenuity and its relationship with the land. This co-evolution ran both ways. Just as people shaped maize, maize shaped people. The crop's success allowed populations to expand and civilizations to rise, fundamentally influencing human history in the Americas. These scientific findings resonate powerfully with ancient myths. The Maya believed humans were made from maize, and modern genetics underscores how closely their survival was linked to it. The ancient people of the Americas were, in essence, early practitioners of genetic selection. They altered genetic structures, created hybrids, and stabilized new plant varieties long before the term existed. The DNA of maize is a testament to its collaborative spirit and shared ingenuity, a hidden history proving that one of humanity's greatest achievements was built on the patient cultivation of a single plant. Beyond its role as food, maize wielded immense cultural and political power. Rulers frequently associated themselves with maize deities, framing their leadership as a guarantee of agricultural abundance. In art and public ceremonies, kings were portrayed as embodiments of the maize god, turning their political authority into a sacred trust tied directly to the prosperity of the fields. As these civilizations declined, the full depth of Maze's sacred importance faded from memory, surviving only in fragmented traditions and stories. It wasn't until the advent of modern archaeology and genetic research that its hidden history began to be rediscovered. 
Ancient maize cobs, preserved for thousands of years in caves, provided a physical timeline of the plant's transformation, offering tangible evidence that confirmed the myths. Deep within ancient caves, maize cobs lay perfectly preserved for thousands of years. Authors like Graham Hancock see these discoveries as more than just agricultural history. For them, the DNA evidence bridges the gap between myth and science, revealing a level of genetic mastery that challenges conventional views of early civilizations. Ultimately, the sacred traditions and the modern scientific revelations tell a single unified story. Maize was the foundation of life, culture, economy, and power. It was the product of both faith and innovation. The ancient civilizations understood this intuitively. By rediscovering these hidden depths, we not only gain a clearer picture of the past, but also a renewed appreciation for how humanity and nature can thrive in a relationship built on respect and collaboration. If the food you eat every day carried not just nourishment, but also the history, struggles, and wisdom of generations before you, how differently would you look at your next meal? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.